Well, good morning, good morning. Angry fans, After how are you? Yeah, so I think I know how to get home, don't you worry. Oh, welcome to week three. Right, you can shut up. Hang on a second. Please say the command. Cancel navigation. Stop the guidance. Stop guidance. Do you want to stop route guidance? Yes. Stop route guidance. Right, thank you. Honestly, these artificial intelligence are so dumb. They are so dumb. Now, what was I saying anyway? Yeah, so it's Monday of week three, still off the register. However, give the GDC due. They say 10 days, and they don't mean 10 calendar days, they mean 10 working days, which means, which is two weeks, isn't it? Why do they say, they say 10 days because 10 days sounds less than two weeks. Two weeks, people think of 14 days. 10 days they think is less than 14 days, but it's not, it's the same in the GDC's calendar. So, I uh, found out, I, I remember I'd forgotten and posted them the letter on the s Tuesday the 3rd, no, the 2nd I think, and then they got it on the 3rd. So, and it's the, uh, what is it today, the 12th? Yeah, it might be, I don't know. Anyway, I think uh, 10 working days is up uh, on the uh, on Wednesday, which is in two days time, isn't it? So they're taking every minute of it, you know. There have been some developments. They do, as I say, in the application, they sort of do say, you, you know, we may ask you for your CPD, or you will be asked for your CPD. Um, but what they mean is it's conditional. Your, your restoration to the register is conditional on you providing your CPD. Please don't leave it out of your application. So they had to write back and ask me for that. So that took me a day to provide that. So that put everything back a day. And then the most ridiculous thing happened, which was that they... Uh, I put down re my reading, you know, reading books, and uh, I put down all the books that I've read because uh, for a long time I was a book reviewer for Quintessence and through the uh, Dental Fusion Organisation and, and GDPA and um, so I listed all the books and then uh, they then flagged that again and said that I hadn't put down in which month of which year I'd read every single book so and this is purely because there was a gaping space in the spreadsheet in the box along the side of the book that is the date column. So I told them I'd read all these books between 2013, is it 14, 15, 16? Yeah, 2013 and 2017, which was my the five years prior to the 3rd of January 2018, is the, the five relevant years for the cycle. And um, but they they're not content with my uh, my self certification that I'd read them they wanted to know in what month I'd read them. Uh, bearing in mind this is the non-verifiable CPD, right? So what they're doing is they're asking me in effect to verify the non-verifiable CPD and then uh, and then the other completely illogical thing is that obviously I said like most other people I'd read all the free magazines, you know, the probe, the dental practice, whatever, you know, gets sent out and uh, Dentistry magazine, so I'd put down I'd read like a hundred hours of that. But they don't want to know in what, in what month I read that. They're, they're happy with that, just like reading magazines, a hundred hours. But reading a book, three hours, when? When was it? When? What, which three hours, you know? It's illogical. It's illogical that they should want to know when I read the books, but not when I read the magazines. And it's illogical that they, they could should accept my blanket statement that I've read so many hours in total magazines and and yet not accept my identical equivalent statement that I've read so many hours of books. So again, you know, that's delayed everything because they've, you know, on, perhaps on a day when it would have gone through or, or gone, been passed forward for approval, 
on the 10 day limit, um, they then send me back this thing and saying, yeah, we want to know exactly when. I mean, do you know when you read a book? <laughs> Can you, like five years ago, can you say what month you read a book five years ago? So, anyway, I provided the information that they requested and, and haven't heard anything else, but I do keep, you know, every sort of couple of days I email them and say, look, you know, can you give me some sort of time scale for this? Because every day that goes by, I have to cancel one more day's patience, don't I? I have to sort of cancel like two days ahead or a day ahead. And uh, you don't want to inconvenience any more patients than you absolutely have to. So what I could do is I could say to my nurse, like cancel up to the end of this week because uh, they, I don't know whether it's coming back this week or not. Uh, I think um, there'll be some movement by Wednesday because Wednesday's their self-imposed deadline. And they do, although they're like, um, how can I put it, although they're they're very anal about the statutory side of things. It, it, it does backfire on them a bit because if they say they give themselves a statutory deadline, then they have to stick to it as strictly as they ask you to stick to your statutory deadline in terms of payment. So I think by Wednesday, it's, the whole thing's going to have to unconstipate itself sooner or later. I'm hoping for an email that just says, "Yeah, now please pay X pounds to such and such a uh, you know and." Um, such and such an account. Not interested, sorry. Oh. So, anyway, I'm going away for the weekend, so I came back this morning, there's this letter on the map. Something's arrived, recorded delivery. So I'm like, oh, I wonder what that is. Because oh, they do say they're going to send you an email. They send they send you an email, then you have to pay. Then once we've got your payment, then we put you back on the register. So it's not the procedure that they've outlined. But I mean, of course, I'm waiting for something, aren't I? I'm waiting for something important. So so uh, they delivered it Saturday, and it's a signed for thing. And so I'm like, well, what you know, it, it could be something to do with the whole procedure, couldn't it? It could be a form that needs signing or. They've sent back my application form because I, you know, forgot to put a full stop after the end of a sentence or something. And uh, so I thought, well, I'll, I've got the time. I'm not doing anything else. <laughs> so, <laughs> I might as well drive into the local sorting office and pick it up, which is about eight miles one way, you know. And the weather today is shocking. You can probably see it's absolutely shocking. So, uh, so I drive into the sorting office, don't I? And uh, with my ID and everything, <laughs> get absolutely soaked. And sure enough, it's a letter from the General Dental Council. Hooray! Telling me I've been struck off. Boo! <laughs> ah, they made me go all the way in to, to pick up a letter telling me that, uh, that they've noticed I haven't paid my registration fee. And uh, and by the way, you know it's a criminal offence, blah blah blah. So so nothing, you know, nothing. Talk about rubbing salt into the wound, you know. I've um, I've got myself, I've got the flu now. Thanks <laughs> thanks to me rushing in to get this letter, which didn't tell me that they've done their job and put me back on the register. It told me that they'd done their job and two weeks ago and taken me off. So anyway, I don't know. I don't know. Let me just get around this. Somebody driving is a bit drunk. I presume. So, still waiting. Still cancelling patients. Unfortunately, the guy, our implantologist, is there, so he's seeing all the emergencies. So, what can you do? You know, as I say, what can you do? I'm just going to have a very busy end of the month. Hopefully, it's going to be busy either way, isn't it? Because I'm going to be on the phone to my briefs if they don't come through with it, and uh, I'll be on the phone to uh, all the patients telling them they can come in if, I, if they do. There's no excuse, by the way. I mean, just in case you're thinking, yeah, well, you know, you're complaining too much. There's no excuse for taking 10 days. They should take, and I like, ready, sit, are you sitting down, all right? 
they should take one day to put you back on the register. Right? This is assuming that you've been struck off for a technical reason of just not paying and that in all other respects they wouldn't have been striking you off for any other reason, you know. It's not like they uh, failed to provide the CPD or anything or the fact that you haven't had a CQC inspection in the last 12 months, which I had. But one day is all it takes to check an application like that. And the reason why I know that is I've got two pilots in the family and in the unlikely event that their licenses expire uh, and they're not allowed to fly, they can go, they go to Gatwick and they can hand over their license before ten, uh, their logbook and their license, their paperwork, their radio license and everything before um, 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning and then the CAA guarantee to have their license uh, renewed uh, by close of play, you know, five o'clock. And it's the same with the passport office now, you know, if you go down to the passport office, they, before a certain time, they'll fast track you and it only costs money. But that's not the problem, is it? You know, they, they want it, they don't want it just to cost you a few hundred quid, they want it to cost you a few thousand. You know, they don't, they want it to, uh, they want it to really hurt because they, they the GDC is, sees itself above the profession. Whereas the passport office at least sees itself, you know, it recognises the problem that people have of not being able to travel. You know, people have got people have got holidays booked, they've got flights booked, they've got travel outside the borders booked, and so they have got um, you know this fast track for people who, who, who uh, like, yeah, I put my hands up, I made a mistake, I forgot to renew my passport, but I need it urgently, and so what they say, okay, for a few hundred quid, use the fast track. The, uh, the CAA are actually more of a sort of a servant to the pilots, you know, the pilots wouldn't stand for uh, it taking 10 days because they've, you know, they've got, they're employed by the airlines, the airlines wouldn't let them take 10 days to renew someone's license if that's what needed doing and uh, they they see themselves more as the sort of the servants of the pilots the pilot comes along needs his license the pilot gets his license but not not dentist no dentist comes along needs his license then get to the back of the queue that's not the back of the queue it goes around the block once before it gets to here so uh, yeah, so that's what we're stuck with. We're just stuck with it. We're stuck with no fast track, and we're stuck with a, a licensing authority that is can't be asked to give out licenses, even though it's supposed to act in the public interest, and it's the public that's, for the most part, inconvenienced by all this. So that's my wind for today. I thought I'd have a, I put an additional wind in, because of the GDC's temerity. To make to give me pneumonia, struggling to Canterbury, waste my time and my petrol to collect a letter that tells me that I've been struck off. Instead of sending me a letter, which they could have done at exactly the same time, <laughs> they could have posted it the same day. I could have received it today, saying that I've been struck back on again. But you know, it is what it is, and perhaps one day it will change. But it hasn't changed in the. Uh, in the 37 years I've been qualified and so you know and God knows I've tried hard enough to change it you know nobody can accuse me of not trying hard enough to change things <laughs> I've tried as hard as a thousand other dentists to change things and uh, still not been able to budge anything a bit so you know so almost certainly it won't change so anyway Hopefully in, a, hopefully in a year or two uh, I won't need to participate in this maniacal minuet. Right, that's me home. I'll um, talk to you later. Bye.